Women Now is brought to you by Cal Coast Financial, Intero, Yup TV, Anil Gulati, Savan, C Bazaar, and El Camino Real Hospital. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to Women Now. Thank you for joining us here today. We have a special show for you as we talk to you about Taikon. Now, did you know that Taikon is one of the largest entrepreneurial conferences that happens here in Silicon Valley? This year, May 15th and May 16th, mark your calendars to join us at the Santa Clara Convention Center. Becoming a successful entrepreneur has very little to do with the school you graduated from, nor does it have anything to do with where you came from or your economic position. It's not about your intellect, your degree, your ideas, or even the goals that you have set for yourself. If you wish to reach the point where nothing can stop you from creating what your vision is, there is only one way. Reach far within yourself. It is inside you. Did you know that Taikon is the world's largest entrepreneurship conference? Today, let's meet with some of the behind the scenes key players who bring us this conference to learn more about Tai, Taikon, and its impact on entrepreneurship and technology and innovation. Uh, you know, Tai started about 21 years ago. And when it started, it was, uh, it was a pioneer organization in terms of its focus on entrepreneurship. Well, viewers, as promised, we have with us BJ Arun, who is a serial entrepreneur and the convener for Taikon 2015. Arun, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, wonderful to see you again. And I've heard so many great things about the show and it's my first time and I'm truly excited to be here today. Thank you so much. We are glad to have you and excited as well for Taikon 2015. Now tell me what's happening at Taikon this year. You know, Taikon every year gets bigger and better and 2015 is no different. Uh, last year, 2014, we had about 4,000 attendees, uh, huge sponsorship. This time we're gonna try and exceed all of those numbers and we already have more than enough registrations and sponsorship to blow away last year's numbers as well. And what we also do at Taikon is we actually try and pick the hottest trends for the marketplace. And this way what happens is when our attendees come, they get to listen to you know, speakers or experts in those fields and get some ideas going on their own. So talking about trends, what's trending this year? Sure, so we actually have two days of Taikon, so we have Friday and Saturday. So Friday we have three tracks, and the tracks are we have cloud computing, we have IoT, IoT stands for Internet of Things, and then we have data economy. So these are three all-day tracks on Friday, and on Saturday we have a whole day track about entrepreneurship, and we always have that common theme of entrepreneurship because Thai is about entrepreneurship and fostering entrepreneurship. And so we have entrepreneurship, and then we also have online education. Online education is also pretty hot. And then we also have oil and gas, which is uh, something new. But we are again trying to bring new trends into the sector, into the valley, because oil and gas is primarily pretty big in places like uh, Texas. But we also want to bring some new opportunities to our attendees. Now let's switch this around a little bit. Uh, from an attendee perspective, outside of all the tracks that are happening and the panel discussions and all of that, uh, the education, uh, what else can an ex uh, attendee expect from Taikon? Uh, personally for me, and I think this applies to many, many people who come to Taikon, the biggest advantage of coming to Taikon is the power of the network. When you come to an event where there are close to 5,000 people with similar aspirations, right? Everybody there is very dynamic. They all have entrepreneurial ambitions. And you don't necessarily even have to be an entrepreneur to come to Taikon. You could be working in a large company, but you actually do get inspired by listening to people and by connecting with other people of similar mindset. Some of the things we do, for example, is we have uh, we offer luncheons called Birds of a Feather. So when you register for Taikon, 
you don't just go and have lunch with 5,000 people or thousands of people. You actually get to choose who you want to have lunch with. That's interesting. So if I say I have interest in the IoT, right, Internet of Things, I actually say, you know what, I'd like to dine with people who have interest in IoT. So then you're actually having lunch with two or 300 people from that sector. So chances are whoever you're sitting next to is going to be somebody from that sector. So you could potentially find your investor, you could find your co-founder, or you could find your next employer. So it's just, just a great, great opportunity to network. And I think that is the biggest advantage of a conference like this. Well, Arun, I think you're doing a very interesting thing this year, which is focusing on diversity, gender diversity, ethnic diversity. And we would like to see a diverse audience at Tycon. And every year I go, I find a new group of people and you introduce the youth uh, panel for the last couple of years and love seeing them and their energy. Now, what are you doing about attracting more uh, women at the conference? So you're right, absolutely right. And I think uh, this is something not uh, recognized just by Thai, but in general, the whole industry is recognizing that we need more women in the workplace. We need more women entrepreneurs. And uh, so some of the things we have done this year as a start is that we have mandated that at least 20% of all speakers in any of the tracks have to be women. And this is a mandate. So the track chairs who put these programs together, they need to at least have 20%. A lot of tracks is a lot more. But eventually we would like to see it get up to 50-50. And so that's something we did on as far as the speakers are concerned. As far as the attendees are concerned, we've actually gone ahead and made serious efforts in trying to recruit women to come. So we actually have teams of people we call our outreach group. And these people actually actively go reach out to women's organizations and try and you know, have them send their uh, delegates or their attendees to the conference. And the last thing we have done, and I think this is uh, probably the best thing that Thai could have done, is we have slashed registration rates for women to really very attractive levels. And so I think uh, that's something that also shows our commitment for gender diversity. We're just not paying lip service. We actually have made it so sort of um, you know, cost effective to, for them to come that it's a no brainer. Five years of giving a voice to your cause. Five years of inspiring and empowering you to a better future. Five years of bringing the South Asian perspective to this land of opportunity and liberty. Five years of Women Now. Don't miss it every Saturday, 8.30 a.m. on KTSM, where we talk about sports, politics, fashion, food, health, and much, much more. India, land of dynamic cultural traditions, exotic cuisines, ancient artistry, colorful handicrafts, memorable music, glamorous fashion, breathtaking dance, all at the bigger, bolder, best platform of San Francisco's Union Square. Be there on June 6th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. WesternUnion.com Spring India Day 2015 will fire your imagination, stir your soul, and satisfy the hungry traveler in you. Brought to you by Women Now and Z Family. Watching America's first South Asian TV talk show, Women Now. Let's get back to the show. We're enjoying meeting different entrepreneurs, innovators, big companies, small business, all that sort of thing, and learning about their issues. So I help my clients uh, build social media and mobile programs. And the way we do is we are bridging the gap between doctor and patient. So talking about diversity, I mean, I would like to see a lot of content diversity as well to attract women because, you know, we are into parallel entrepreneurship. We are not tech based, uh, but we have, you know, social, we are in social space and uh, we also consider ourselves entrepreneurs and need a lot of help with that. So uh, what are you doing to attract women like us? So I think, you know, I mean, we are limited by the number of tracks that we can support, right? We only, it's a two day conference. And so we also have to sort of cater to the majority of the people coming. And now while we do have, you know, sort of uh, women forums and, you know, women-centric programs at Thai, but at the conference, 
we have to go with what most people want to hear about or learn about. And so, yes, you are right. We are kind of tech heavy, but then again, we are in the heart of Silicon Valley. So it's, right. you know, it doesn't get any more tech heavy anywhere in the world than it does in the Silicon Valley. So yes, we are guilty of being a little tech heavy, but having said that, right, things like online education, right? So now we're getting leaders in the field of education and we have lots of women who are you know, leaders in education. So we have those people coming. And I mentioned to you about uh, the oil and gas sector. Again, non-traditional. I don't know how many women are in it, but we're trying to bring some diversity in. But really, I think if you would like to see, and you know, before we started the show, we were talking a little bit about, hey, you know, you're in the media sector, there are lots of people in social entrepreneurship, things like that. We do try and have monthly programs. And jewelry, I mean, name it, and I'm seeing a huge trend of women uh, you know, starting their own company because that's the easiest thing for us to do, uh, not to get into a nine to five job because like you said, we have so much more responsibility at home. Right. If we can work at our own space and time, that is the perfect thing. And entrepreneurship just comes naturally. Oh, so uh, I would imagine that, you know, there's a huge number of women starting businesses that are not tech, but you know, are entrepreneurs and would love to be a part of this whole movement of entrepreneurship. So Tycon is just the two days, which is a culmination of our whole year's efforts. But every month, right, Thai has programs going on. In fact, believe it or not, Thai Silicon Valley has at least 50 programs a year, which is an average of one a week. So every single week, we have some program or the other going on, and there are uh, you know, various programs like this, where you have people from the hospitality sector who speak. There are people from the fashion industry who speak. There are so many entrepreneurs who have you know, started online fashion companies, all kinds of things. So there is really, no, we're not limiting it to saying, hey, this is like only for tech people. So if you, for example, wanted to speak about something, you're welcome to come. We'll make the space available for you. We even host a dinner, you know, on the weekly events. And we'd love to have, you know, more women step up and say, hey, you know what? This is the kind of stuff we do and we'd like to be you know, uh, featured in Thai. Yeah, that's a great thing to know. Um, now every year I find something exciting. I mean, do you have something like that this year? I found the Dice bus once, and then I found uh, yeah, last year was uh, Gen Z, or Gen Z, the scooter, and you also had, I think, a fashion house flown in from India. I think Indian Roots was there. Um, that was attractive. Uh, do you have anything like that this year, which is the punch? of the event? You know, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, you will find, uh, you know, sort of drone-like things flying around mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, IoT is a big theme mm -hmm. and uh, drones are part of the Internet of Things. Right. So you keep the smile on because you could be uh, photographed or videographed all the time with the drone, right? Because they're oh, flying around absolutely. and you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's best to keep the smile on. Now, talking about entrepreneurship, I mean, to a serial entrepreneur, I would have so many questions and advices that you could give to our audience because it's a hard road. And uh, tell me how you got into being a serial entrepreneur and what kept you going and what are some of the things that you've learned in your journey? I think the benefits of entrepreneurship are pretty clear, right? A, you get to be your own boss. Even if you're a company of one, hey, if you don't have like a nasty boss, that itself is great. The second thing is the creation of value, right? I mean, you're not limited by a salary at some company that you work for. You could just you know, create as much value as your own potential allows you to. And that's a huge benefit, right? It completely frees you up from the shackles of a paycheck. And so that also motivated me a lot. So creating value, being my own boss, and finally, there's so much of joy and satisfaction creating value, creating something from nothing. So you create a product or you create a service, you create employment for dozens if not hundreds of people. It's just a fabulous feeling. So once you have become an entrepreneur, there's no going back to a job ever again. So it's just a very, very fulfilling uh, thing to do. And in my own journey, right, I mean, I, as I was telling, I'm an old guy, so I've been around in the Valley for over two decades. Now, let's go back to the start of a company. You said you build something from nowhere and uh, you get a thought in your mind and you want to, you know, make it a real, uh, turn it into reality, right? Now, tell me about what you tell your mind when you have that thought. What are some of the checklist uh, things that you have to take off that, you know, here's what the thought would turn into reality, yeah. I know. So a lot of times, you know, what happens is that, you know, we all start off by thinking that, okay, I'm going to build a certain product or I'm going to, like, offer a certain service. But you have to keep evolving based on the needs of the market. Almost always, I can guarantee that when you start by saying, I'm going to do something, you actually end up completely different place, but at least you need to take that first step on the journey of entrepreneurship. 
And even in my case, right, I started by doing something. I was starting, you know, something else in hardware, but I ended up building supercomputers because you have to keep evolving and you have to keep reacting to market needs. So if the market wants a certain kind of product or service, you have to, you know, look and say, hey, what is the best bang for my time? And then go do that. And the other thing is you need to actually you know, sort of take the first step towards entrepreneurship by trying to do something or, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. For many, many smart people, I see that, I, you know, I refer to this category as armchair entrepreneurship. You know, these armchair entrepreneurs, they all say that they want to start a company, but they'll never quit the security of a sort of stable paying job. And so, they, you know, their ambitions are never fulfilled because they want that stability and, and there's nothing wrong in that. So on that note, we'll end our conversation today. Wish you great luck at Tycon. It's your first uh, as a convener and I'm sure you will rock it and we'll be there to support you. Thank you and looking forward to seeing you at the conference. Thank you. Thanks, Anna.